Hi, my name's Dennis Pettis, and this is London, my workplace. Stuff full of parties, parks, politicians, pop stars, premieres, prize givings, and hundreds of filthy birds. My job is really quite simple. I am a social astronomer, but I don't use a telescope. Oh, no. These are my lenses. And when I see a star, I don't just look at it. I move in and piss it off. In a country which is largely governed by the celebrity party, I am the voice of opposition. In the next 30 minutes, I want you to think of me as a bike wheel. Sure, I'm tired. Who wouldn't be? I'm going to be working without brakes as a revolutionary spokesman, a simple peddler uh, who will be reflecting with the use of clips. So where to begin? Well, how about with an assortment of stars from the movie world? Uh, I bumped into Hugh Grant at a premiere. I uh, gave him a mouthful of my own, free of charge. As ever, he was with his loyal maiden, Liz Hurley. You're not in L.A. now, but you spend a lot of time in L.A. I have, yeah. I just spent five weeks there. I, mean, I always think of L.A. as sort of muesli, if you know what I mean. Take away the nuts and the fruit, and it's all flakes. <laughs> How do you like your cereal? You like your cereals sort of crunchy or <laughs> mushy? Mush. Well, uh, I only had about two seconds to think when I was in L.A., so I didn't have much time to think about my cereal. But you're right. It's insane, though. But yes. That's good. I know good. what they say. The hurly worm catches it. Oh. Bird, bird, you the fool, bird. The bird catches the worm, and I must say, looking at you, you suddenly caught a beautiful worm. He's oh, over wow. there. I want you to go and give him a kiss. How are you? Hi, hi. What's this show? Uh, this is uh, BBC Two. It's the Sunday show. Uh, Sunday show, right. Now, I have to tell you, Hugh, uh, I must be honest with you, I, found your, I find your acting a little bit woody. A little bit woody. Woody, right, yes. I mean, when you made your appearance in the film Sirens, uh, yes. I thought someone threw a chair into the room. Uh-huh. Uh, how do you get yourself psyched up? I mean, you, you go into the forest and sort of stare at a few trees or... <laughs> uh, oh, you can f*** <laughs> Oh, yeah. I've actually got something in my pocket you might be very interested in. Uh, it's actually... A co I've copyrighted the film title, Film 96. Really? I have. And if I send this to myself, yes. you, you can use it. Oh, that's tough. <laughs> so, um, I'm shattered. I have a couple of very quick questions for you. Yeah, yeah. Is the E in the middle of your name? Is that is that to appeal to a younger audience? You know the E. E for ego. No, no, no. It's because uh, there's a character actor with the same name, and he agreed that I could instead of changing my name, so that all the people who never thought I'd ever make it would know that I hadn't changed my name. I I had put a letter in between. Right. Gotcha. Gotcha. It's the winner. Michael. Michael. Michael, I understand you have nine toilets. Is that right? You have nine toilets? Yeah, I have nine toilets, but I didn't bring any of them with me. So you actually make a lot more crap than people give you credit for, oh, right? No question of it. Now, just like Michael Winner, I love my food, and there's nothing we enjoy more than slobbering over a tasty little tart. Although, unlike Michael, I don't mind if there are a few pubes on mine, you know? Now, from one gross man to another, I met up with Lloyd at some top posh nosh function, and also got a chance to meet my favorite friend chef, Albert Rue. Hello, how All are right. you? Very well. Good, good. Uh, you're a French man, a French chef. Uh, yeah. But you have very strong English ties, I hear. Uh, extremely strong. Can I um, just check that for a minute? Yes. I recently had a terrible experience in a French restaurant. Mm -hmm. So I really, really got put off French food, you know. I went to a French restaurant yes. in France, in Paris, uh, yes. La, La Boloc, you know? Yeah, you know? yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. I went to the toilet. Yes. No paper. Oh, Christ. So I had to use 10 francs to wipe up. Yeah. Oh, well. But it only comes in a coin. Hello. Hi. How are you? I'm fine. Good. You're a fascinating man uh, who's had a fascinating life. <laughs> Would you mind, can I talk about your background for a minute? Mm. Well, it's like a marble fireplace. True. Ashtray. Nice looking glass of red wine up there, sort of gray paint with some nice yeah, white. A wonderful description of my background. That's not bad at all, is it? <laughs> can you smell something funny with that? I did hear you had trouble with your vowels. Oh, that very went, amusing. Whew, that went really shot through his keyhole, I can tell you. <laughs> Do you speak some? Yeah, sure, why not? 
Thanks, buddy. Now, unfortunately, not everybody is as keen to talk about their background as Lloyd Grossman. I've been rebuffed and snubbed by the most unlikely of people. I mean, who would have thought that Leslie Wide Open Dorian Josephs would have ran away from a proud penis like myself? Not me. I mean, after birds. Uh, no way, please. I've got a glass of wine with my lame on it. After birds Excuse of a me, feather. Dennis, I don't know you. <laughs> Just thinking after birds of a feather, was he thinking about moving into comedy? Terrible. Hi, Keith. Hi. Oh, f off. <laughs> How you You've got the same scriptwriter as Hugh Grant. Right up. Right, this is a foreigner. What he's doing on British broadcasting, nobody knows. Especially see? those who have seen the show. And goodbye. You want to see a great trick? You want to see a great trick? Let me show you a trick. Hey, can I just show you a really good trick? Watch this. Watch this. No, no. Watch, watch, this watch. is going to be nasty. This is great. Capital. Mm. This is great. <laughs> Isn't that good? No, that's what is known in broadcasting terms as revolting. Can I have a little chat with you quickly? <laughs> There's just two really close friends of mine. One of the gladiators. I've been trying to get in touch with you. One of the guys, right? They're really strong, good-looking guys. First guy's called Stain. He's got like a fluorescent patch on his trousers, Stain. And this other guy, you'll love him. He's called he's called Scrotum. Big guy, got this big sack over his shoulder. I'm telling you, he'll re really make the show. I'll keep in touch with you about I that. I think you should, actually. Mm. You're interested, aren't you? I am interested, particularly in scrotum. Now, like Ulrika, Madonna likes to surround herself <laughs> with strapping young men. Um, she hasn't got Trojan, Wolf, and the rest of them. But the guy with his tongue hanging out on page seven of her book, Sex, certainly looked gladiator. I never had much time for Madonna, up until she started wearing that spiky metal bra. Until then, I found her work completely pointless. It's all about sex these days. Now that's what the kids want. They want to see everything. In her case, they have seen everything. So what next? Oh, Can we have an intelligent question, please? Uh, Dennis, BBC. Uh, you've had most of your anatomy photographed. Mm -hmm. uh, I wonder if you, if you thought about maybe bringing out a book and letting us see a few internal organs, possibly your kidneys, uh, fallopian tubes. <laughs> Uh, you Madonna, you, you, Madonna, you've had your navel pierced. Do you, do you think you can have your brain pierced so you can have a stud in your head 24 hours a day? <laughs> you know, in my line of work, it's important to keep in shape. I like to keep a balanced diet, and I work out every morning. Sure I do. Up, down, up, down, then the other eyelid. But I try and keep my physical exercises more sort of mental, if you know what I mean. I jump to conclusions, I jog my memory, skip the country occasionally if things get a bit heavy. And last weekend, I went out five nights running. Not bad going. Hey, yeah, let's be honest. I mean, speaking as a real man, if God wanted us to touch our toes regularly, he'd have stuck them on our nuts. Now, while we're on the subject of health and fitness, I bumped into a couple of sporting types on my travels, starting off with Desmond Lineham. Now, apart from myself, you are without doubt the smoothest no, 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 no. man on television. No, you are. No, I think you are. No, you are. I, I mean, any, any more relaxed than you'd be in a coma. You know what I'm saying? You are incredibly relaxed. I am in a coma. Most of the time. Ah, most right, of the so time. my theory was correct. The trick of working on television, as you'll find out in due course, I don't want to be patronizing, no, no, but you've no, probably no. only been I'm at it. Beginner. You've probably only been, only been at it about 10 or 15 years. 20 minutes. 20 minutes or so. The trick is to be in a coma. Do you watch pornography? Given half the chance, I'd give it a go. What have sure. you got in mind for me? Well, I watched a film the other night, and yeah. I was watching this orgy sequence. Yeah. And there were things going in and out, and oral, and, and just so oh much in. Yeah, how do they do that? Well, you will know having watched the film, wouldn't you? Yeah, but it was the complexity, the angles, the shooting. I mean, it was craftsmanship. Ah, well, in they, every way. Perhaps you could uh, maybe deal with that on your we'll program. We'll have to do an item on it, obviously, clearly. Yeah. As we go out at 8 o'clock, we might not get it all in, uh, uh, you know, for want of a better stars. expression. I need to um, bring up something that's quite unpleasant, but there are rumors circulating around that you might actually uh, be in league with the devil, as in uh, being a Satanist. Uh, do you deny those reports? <clears throat> Emphatically. Emphatically. I mean, I'll tell you what it is. Well, wh wh where did wh you get this report from? Well, it's a number of factors. The people uh, are connecting one thing that used to wear a lot of red when you were playing football. You used to wear the number six. Yeah, well, and, uh, like six, six, six. Yeah, well, yeah, lots you did. Yeah. Exactly. And also, uh, you were very uncomfortable with crosses, uh, people seem to remember. <laughs> you can't deny but, this, yeah, can you? Oh, well, that's right. It all, it all ties in. Well, I'll tell you what would absolutely um, kill off kill all, all the rumors. Kill off all rumors, yeah. What is if you, that? if you pose nude. <laughs> because then the theory of you having like a baboon's ass, you know, which the devil obviously has, then you know, no one would uh, have a patch on you. Could you do that possibly? 
Not necessarily it's, today. Is this for real? Is it? Is this a, is this for real? Oh, this is, is for real. This is, 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 is as real as they come. Live and live and real. It? Good. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Well, like I mean, I, I obviously this has come as quite a shock to you if you are indeed uh, human, uh, but I found you very very normal. Oof, what a diabolical interview that was. Alan Hansen has worked as hard as hell to get where he's got in broadcasting, and not without making a few bloody sacrifices, I'll bet. Still, he's not the only TV presenter with bad habits, of course. If heavy smoker Mariella Fostrop were a dog, she'd definitely be a husky, because not only has she got the voice for it, but they also come in packs of 20. Can I have a couple of qu short questions? I've just been up to the party. Uh, everybody out there is wearing Chanel number no. 5. Really? Uh, Are you think, sure? Yeah, you're, you seem to be wearing Embassy number six. Was that a conscious obviously decision? Obviously haven't got a nose for perfume. <laughs> no, I'm right. You're, you're, all right. Uh, Melvin, can I just have a quick word with you? Uh, you're, you're not a man who likes to uh, blow his, his own trumpet, uh, but it'd be nice if you blew your nose every once in a while. Is that supposed to be funny? It is, yeah. I find it hilarious. Good evening. How are you? Fine, thank you. Yeah, me too. Uh, I just wonder if there was a particular uh, part in your face that you prefer to get hit, hit in. Uh, I actually don't have a preferred part, but which part of your head do you like being hit by? Then? I like being hit in the temples. Do you? Yeah, just there. There isn't a pulse there. You're dead, technically. I know. That's why it's so quick. It's over in seconds. You know, yeah, you don't know whether you're gushing with blood or anything. It's over. So you're looking to maybe go into television where there's more chance of you getting stabbed as opposed to just punched? No, not really. No? no that this surprises this... me. No, no. It's you're not, you're not an, an ambitious man? Not a stabbed person, no. No? More, what, more bullet? Bullet. Just more, more chance of getting through. Like a bit of shrapnel in the neck? Not really, no. no. Can I ask you, how do you feel about being the only, possibly the only whale on the planet that people would like to see harpooned and yeah. sort of gutted on a beach? Yeah. My mother doesn't say that, funnily enough. Doesn't she? No, 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 no. She's, uh, she loves me. And well, that's, that's relief, the main huh? thing. That's the main thing. Does your mother love you? She loves me dearly. Yeah. 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 But you've enjoyed a reputation over the years uh, of sort of rudely uh, interrupting people while they're in, in mid-conversation. Uh, how, how do you think that makes them feel? Um, I don't think I ever rudely interrupted. Thought I'd get out of there fast, man. I didn't want him blubbering all over my microphone. Look at this, man. I hate coppers, you know? I hate coppers. They really bug me. Hate them. I like notes, wads, roll mops, and I respect the kind of people that earn that kind of dough, you know? The big earners, the tycoons, people who walk in wallets. Thank you, love. Hi, Richard. Yes. Hi. Hello. I was going to say, you got the most extraordinary airline. Oh, thank you. With all the pressure you're under, it hasn't, <laughs> hasn't receded at all, you know? It's oh, unbelievable. Good evening, Peter. How are you? Very good. How are you? Very well, thank you. I noticed your, your, your haircut is really, it's a very fashionable cut of me. There's a lot of guys in here with sort of peroxide long hair. I, oh, that's me. <laughs> I know, but it, it's, it's certainly catching on, I reckon. But the girls here, they're having a good time? Well, I think so, you know. Yeah, hey, come on, this is a super scene. You got some big guys here. I mean, these guys like this don't grow on trees, you know? They, they yeah, swing well, from them. Yeah, well, you know. This is street fellows for God's sake. Yeah, I've never been here before. I didn't know what it is. I mean, I've been told that you know, I had quite a Neanderthal atmosphere, but apparently, you know, my surprise is far more basic than that. <laughs> Donald, a couple of questions for the BBC. Are you aware of a program called Trumpton? No, I'm not, because you got more dough than Windy Miller. Well, that's very nice. Did your ex-wife ever go to the laundrette? Or is it just her husband she takes to the cleaners, man? <laughs> For all those years, he had a rough ride, didn't he? Although it's got to be said, Ivana's new boyfriend certainly come up trumps. Uh, I bet he's not the first to do that. I mean, she made a lot of money out of Donald. I just hope this new guy doesn't just see her as a blank check. Now, I met Don in New York, and while I was out there, I thought I'd sort out a few niggling sexual problems of mine. Uh, I heard the top sex granny, Dr. Ruth, was hanging out around the corner. Thankfully, she tucked herself in by the time I got to her. Dr. Ruth, how are you? Hi. Pleased to meet you. I'm very well. Hi. But I'm very concerned at the moment uh, because last night I had unprotected sex with a ghost and I'm uh, I'm worried I might have caused a phantom pregnancy, you know? You know what? What? Ask me a better question. Is sex hereditary? You better go back there and ask me a better question. I'm going to ask you a better question now. Do you, do you think having sex, is, is it hereditary? I need a better question. Well, because if, you, if your parents didn't have it, the chances are you're not going to have it either. See? Oh. That's true, no? And finally, one more thing. 
My father, to, when my father told me about the birds and the bees, he told me it so well. You know, now the only thing that turns me on is sort of blue tits covered in honey. Did he do wrong? Can I get a better question? Oh, hi. Yeah, uh, can I speak to the uh, naughty Swedish dinner lady, please? Yeah, sure, I'll hold. Yeah, hi. Uh, no, no, I don't want any of that weird stuff, man. I just want to come around and lay the table, if that's okay. Great. Uh, can you make sure the drawers are clean? Wax the legs? Nice. And a nice black lacy cloth. Beautiful. Okay, I'll see you about nine. See you, madam. Now, some of the people on TV who I most admire are the wise guys. They're funny men. Grin makers. But unfortunately for every comic genius, there's always some shoddy joker who'll do anything for a chief laugh. <laughs> That's the second time today I've had two boiled eggs. <laughs> I couldn't, there's no way I could buy you. Are you for sale? Could I buy you? No, why? You went to... <laughs> well, because I, I collect old comics, you see. Oh, that's right. I'm, I'm, I'm the Beano of all time. I can, I, can I maybe sew up a deal with you after this? OK. Uh, how, you were talking high finance here. 85 pence at least, I would have thought. It's a deal. OK, you're on. Beautiful. <laughs> Cheers. It's a pleasure to have you in my collection. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> all the best. Well done, guys. That's nice. How are you? I'm fine. Good. I just, I wonder how you describe it. Do you describe yourself as an anarchist, uh, anti-monarchist, socialist, uh, sort of urban terrorist? What, what kind of risk job are you? I'm none of those things. I'm a satirist. It's you're an, you're it's an ancient sa English profession. Mm, I see. I want to ask you a couple of brief questions. Um, have you, did you ever have coffee uh, at Maxwell's house? No. Never? No. What's your favorite soft drink? Is it legal aid? You're doing the jokes. I am, yeah. Fine, I'll, 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 I'll just stand here. Okay. Uh, do you wear designer libels? I don't know you very well. In fact, we very recently met. But, um, 30, seconds ago, yeah. 30 seconds ago. But And it might seem a bit upfront to ask you something like this. Mm -hmm. But is there any chance you might be able to pick up my grandmother tomorrow afternoon? I'm running really late. I got a very, very busy day. She's a really nice woman. She's, she's very easy to get on with. Um, what time? Talking about quarter to six, six o'clock. I mean, walk around the block, uh, feed Gatwick. her. Gatwick? Yeah. No, no, I just pick oh, her up. No, just pick her up. Yeah, she, oh, she's right. going to the club. Uh, oh, she's right. going to watch a movie. I mean, I feel terrible about asking you this because it's a real cheek. I wouldn't ordinarily say yes in a situation Obviously like not. Uh, right. You realize that I'm quite busy. I realize yeah. you're a very busy man, um, but too busy to look after an elderly woman who really, really is very keen on you. Uh, and it's just for an hour. Mm. And if she likes you, maybe you make it a regular thing every, every week. Well, ordinarily, I'd say no. Right. Uh, so, no. <laughs> Great. Hi, Clive. Hello. How are you? I'm fine, thank you. How are you? Oh, very well, thank you. Right. I just wanted to know, as a legal man, yes. do you worry you ever might sort of lose your appeal? <laughs> You're writing your own script, or you get them off, oh, uh, no, no, get them no. off mugs or it's something? It's all yeah. mine, baby. It's yes, all mine. Well, I well, think well, I lost my appeal a long time ago. You did? Yes, absolutely, yes. That's unfortunate. Well, I, what's confusing, I find, is that as a, as a lawyer, you're very yeah. expensive, but on the television, you're very cheap. Yeah, cheap? You think I'm cheap? I think you're fairly cheap. <laughs> I'm cheap on your programs. You just come up and incorporated me. <laughs> that was quite cheap, wasn't it? This is like through the... Through the, uh, through the station. Uh, <laughs> finally. Through the keyhole without the budget, this is. <laughs> <laughs> well, we've got a big budget. Have you? Right. Well, I want to finally. Yeah. You got any plans of making a program about classical music? So sort of Clive Anderson talks Bach? Uh, no, no, no? But, uh, that's a very. I must write these down. Write I've down. got my Bach. Uh, right. Just uh, thirsty. Yeah. And who do you work for? Very nice. Whose wine is it anyway? <laughs> you I got to go. a prop and a joke? This is brilliant. Keep the rest. I've got to okay. get a train. Thank See you, you later. <laughs> I got your number, buddy. <laughs> now, of course, Clive Anderson isn't the first celebrity to have written a book, and he won't be the last. You gotta respect the wishes of stars who aren't interested in writing. Take, for example, Nami Campbell. Now, some swans float, hers sank without a trace. Hey, Nami, how come you're dressed like a duck? <laughs> I understand your book is quite thick. Is that your idea? I read it back. Can you confirm or deny uh, reports that you uh, said something mildly interesting in an interview once? Can I my supermodel?
Ian, after a heavy night of curry abuse, uh, can you still get the runs? Yeah, I've never had any problem getting the runs yet. Great. <laughs> uh, also, Ian, uh, if, if the England team actually got to play a test in China, do you think they'd all go out for a duck? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know, you know more about it than me. I figured they would. Oh, right, right. I'll make better than mine next time in China. Right. You've, uh, you've, been had, you've had quite a few nicknames in your career. Beefy, bo Beefcake, uh, Bothy, Boo Boo. Uh, what's your personal favourite, and have you got anything you might think is more appropriate? No, I think uh, everyone in the free world knows me as Beefy, and that's, I'm quite happy with that. Uh, but uh, have you ever farted in a wicked keeper's face? Um, not that I can remember, if you've asked the wicked keeper. I got an Uncle Sam and an Aunt Ella. Could you, they're big fans of yours. Could you look in there and say, I love you, Sam and Ella? But I tell you what I can do if you read the novel. There is a journalist in it, a little bit of a rat fink journalist, and he comes to a very sticky end because he eats something very nasty, and he ends up in hospital. Oh, my God. Will you sign a book for me? Of course I will. Thank you. There <laughs> we go. <laughs> That's somebody else's book. No, no, no. You look a lot prettier in own. real life, you know yeah. that? Yeah, and I tell you what, the sex in my book's a hell of a lot better than it is in his book. Well, that's hardly surprising, because there's absolutely no sex in Ian Botham's book, uh, apart from a bit in Chapter 5 where his dog Stumpy gets laid. <laughs> uh, to rest. But, uh, summertime always reminds me of the Conservative Party, you know? Blue skies, Mr. Whippy, affairs in the local park, lying in the sun. Oh, yeah. Oh. Getting shit-faced. Politicians. You know, I wanted to meet some of the big players. Where better than a party thrown by John Cole? I never met him before. Uh, we hit it off immediately. Which he would like quite spontaneously. Oh no, I'm going on and on. I'm going to take it to the bar and I can stop it and take it I just want to, because of your insight into the political world, I want to know is it true uh, that the cabinet? In general, they have a, a great love of old bicycles, particularly sort of German rallies from the late 30s. Sorry, yeah. uh, Sorry. Bye, bye, Thank you very much. Bye, John. Outside, I saw uh, Michael Portillo, and he seemed to have a a stain on the front of his trousers. Do you think that's the latest in a long line of uh, government leaks? I think this is a very silly interview. I think you might be right. And I think you're intending it to be. <laughs> Sorry, I was just wondering, do you not think it's a, uh, inappropriate, uh, the fact that you're named after a, a tobacco, uh, for your campaign against smoking? I mean, you got blonde hair, golden Virginia. <laughs> well, I don't think it's fair to sort of take this out on my parents. Right. You know, okay. that, um, I'm not, it's my surname that causes me more grief than my Christian what, name. What's funny about Bottomley? Oh, I don't know. Some of our children at school always seem to laugh at really? it as a name. I can't imagine why. Kids are strange. Well, today, kids are strange, but so long as kids don't smoke, I shan't worry too much. Okay. But I'm trying to sell my house at the moment. Uh, it's a two bed semi. I wonder whether you want to buy, maybe turn it into a hospital. I could take no, one of the well, beds away. Well, the trouble is that um, we're into bigger hospitals, uh -huh. and we need we need sort of a lot of modern equipment. We need a lot of space. My wife's my wife's actually take... pregnant, three months pregnant. Great. So I got to dash and, and call an ambulance just in case. Uh -huh. uh, you're, I'm in a bit of a hurry. Well, you're America. a great believer in, in giving you, making young offenders do more time. I just wondered if uh, perhaps any other herbal remedies, perhaps uh, perhaps basil or parsley. And also, if, you re if we reintroduce capital punishment in this country, will that just affect London? What do you think? And finally, uh, the government recently withdrew the party whips. Is that a good deterrent? Because uh, they've all got spare ones at home anyway. Uh, Michael Howard, of course, was a very close friend of ex-Prime Minister Thatcher, uh, or PMT uh, for short. It's the first time that millions of men have suffered from PMT during her incredibly lengthy period uh, in power. She just didn't seem to know when to throw the towel in, did she? Uh, and make way for new blood. Uh, I've always found her quite attractive myself, especially in those summer dresses, you know. Boy, I'd like to cleave down her peerage, man. <laughs> Another one of my favorite politicians, however, is the grandmother of the Labour Party, Baroness Barbara Hassel. Now, Barbara doesn't give too many interviews, so if you get a chance to meet her, you don't want to waste it. Ba Barbara? Hi. Uh, you, ha you have a reputation of being a very serious woman. Do you think you could get this grapefruit off my thumb? It seems to be stuck. Uh, can I have a couple of questions for you? I doubt it. Uh, well, I just want to ask you. I know you want to ask me, but you're not going to. Do you find it ironic? Uh, the amount of Tory MPs having affairs, you're getting more women into Labour than Tony Blair could ever dream possible. 
Is it also not true the only harmony in the party is what you spray on your hair every morning? No? I'll take that as a maybe. Soho, fashion's maternity ward. New looks born every minute. From right in the pulse center of town. But in the fashion world, there are shepherds and there are sheep. I am a shepherd. Bah. All right, doesn't surprise me, that kind of thing. You know, I'm a fashion guru. I mix in fashion circles. Fashion people like me. Basically, you can find them anywhere. They're giving away free poo and fish eggs, from catwalks to car showrooms. Few stains on my carrot. You recommend a powder that I might be able to get them out with? Uh, discretion, I would say. Discretion. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. I hear also that you are banned from the Hard Rock Cafe. Is that from being that's too, true. too cheesy? Uh, that's true. That was a long time ago. How did well, you hear that? Uh, I heard. I've got my uh, uh. contacts. <laughs> Believe me. And also, I look at your suit and I think water. Now, why do you think water? Because it's absolutely tasteless. <laughs> Excuse me. Can I have a quick word? How are you? Hello, who are you? I'm uh, Dennis from BBC Two. How are you? Are you you're busy? Very. Yeah? In fact, the man I'm working for has just disappeared, I Stuart Purvis of ITN. Yes. I, I, was re I read somewhere you, you don't like to be recognized. Is that correct? Yeah, I think that's pretty, yeah, I think that's pretty correct. Yeah, that's fair enough. Uh, who the hell are you, anyway? Well, I don't know. Who are you? <laughs> from BBC Two. I am. You? Nothing. Hello. Hi. All right. uh, why did the model stare at the orange juice? I don't understand what you're saying. I'm a model. I'm stupid. Yeah, but why, why are you staring <laughs> at the orange juice? Because we like C vitamins. No, nope, because it said concentrate on the carton. See ya. Concentrate on the what? Carton. I didn't get it, but uh, <laughs> I guess I wasn't supposed to. <laughs> you certainly weren't. Well, much as I'd like to, I can't sit around here gassing all day. It's going to be dark soon. Stars will be coming out, and there's work to be done. I just thought I'd leave you with a few wise words my father told me. He said, look at the state of your room, you punk bum. But also, maybe more profoundly, he said, in the battlefield of life, the penis, my dear, than the sword. Come, Chopper. Let's ride.